Today I'm going to show you how I upcycled an antique Singer sewing machine into a lamp. I had a customer reach out to me asking me to turn their Singer sewing machine into a lamp. I had done this once before, but this one was a little different from the previous one in that it was inside of this enclosed wooden base. The process was the same except for the end, in which I'll go over the differences between the two at the end of the video. The first step is disassembling, but before you do, it's a great idea to take pictures of every angle so that you have reference when it comes time to reassembling. I'm not going to go over too much detail on how to take it apart, however, there were a few problem areas that I'll be giving some attention to. Right now, our goal is to remove the internal shaft that runs across the length of the machine. To do that, we have to clear out the components at the front of the machine as well as disconnecting the wheel at the back. Just make sure you keep track of which fasteners go with which parts along the way. The first challenging part is removing the bushing that's attached to the shaft at the outside of the machine. I found the best way to do this is to grind down the pin with a rotary tool, add some lubricant and knock the pin out with the punch. For the record, I don't actually know if it's called a bushing. In fact, I don't know what any of these parts are called. So I'll just make up names along the way. But even with the pin removed, it was still difficult to remove the bushing. I ended up placing a flat bar under the lever at the front of the machine, locking it into position. This stopped the shaft from turning as I worked the bushing off off the end of it. After removing this lever, a couple of screws from inside this opening, and an extra one along the arm, you should be able to knock out the drive shaft with a punch and a mallet. It's possible you may need to get a long screwdriver and stick it through the opening to knock the piece that I'm holding there with my index finger and my thumb to help it along the way. Next was removing the vertical piece that was attached to the shaft, and any parts that were now loose at the bottom. With the disassembly finished, we can now start modifying. I cut off the first few inches of the shaft and cleaned up the edge so that it it would fit back in the hole nicely. But before putting it back in the machine, I bored out a hole in the end of it, and then drilled a small hole through and perpendicular to the board hole I just made. The hole was sized to accept the tip of a rotary switch. Passing the drill bit through the same hole with the switch inside, I was able to pass a finishing nail through the hole to lock the turning part of the switch into position. Placing the shaft back in the hole, the switch is now installed. It's time to reassemble the front just as we took it apart, with the exception of the needle driving pin which had to be cut to make room for the light socket. As with all the external metal parts, before reinstalling them, I polished them up with a wire reel and Mother's Mag and Aluminum Polish. Marking and drilling a hole into the faceplate, we are now able to install the light socket. I ran the power cord up through the bottom and wired up a switch in the opening. I am not going to go over how to solder or make electrical connections in this video. There is already lots of information available online. Just make sure you do your research so that it's done safely. With the light socket wired up, we can now reinstall the faceplate and put the rear end all back together. After a few more pieces to polish up and reinstall, we can start working on the wooden base. I needed to find a way to have the machine securely fastened to the base so that it wouldn't come crashing down when being hung from a wall. I started by drilling a hole for the power cord and then removing the metal base plate. I did this by cutting a small block to size and then fastening it to the inside of the base. Then I drilled a hole in through the tip of the machine and into the wooden block. After driving in the screw and tightening the hole down at the bottom end, it was feeling pretty secure. Next was cutting the hanger to size and fastening to the bottom of the base. The difference between this one and the previous lamp I made was that my previous one came from a table that looked like this and had a bottom that looked like that. For this one I removed all the components underneath and used an angle grinder to cut out the bottom rim on both sides. That allowed me to install the hanger using a tap and die so that it would hang flat against a wall. Moving back to the build all that was left was to wire up the plug, screw in an Edison bulb, plug it in, and turn the wheel. Thanks so much for watching. If you enjoyed this video, please make sure you give it a like and subscribe if you want to see more videos like this. Lamps like this are available at audiblepipeart.ca.